Zamore. Now, our next guest met and fell in love. Oh, over here. I'm totally ignoring what my director said to me. Apologies, Dan. Spread, <laughs> spread the love. Don't hate me for that. I'm supposed to be the deaf one, not you. <laughs> our next guest met and fell in love in Sligo in 1977, where they both had taken a course in helping them to cope with their gradual sight loss. The couple later married and moved to Dublin, where they became heavily involved in fundraising for the Balbriggan branch of Irish Guide Dogs for the Blind. Now, since then, they have raised literally millions of euro for charity. Tom and Bree Johnny will join us now. Good morning, you're both very welcome. And you're also joined by Eunice and by Gatsby as well, your dogs, who are, I suppose, every bit as much a member of your family as anybody else. Well, now, welcome good to Good morning you both. to both of you. Um, Bree, tell us about, because today is all about love, um, and we'll get, we'll get to um, um, your fundraising and all the rest of it, but tell us about when you met himself. Um, well, we met, as you said, in Sligo, and um, I think, as you say, it was love at first sight. Really? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. met at a kitchen table and had a cup of tea together. And we spent hours and hours talking after that. You just clicked? Oh, absolutely, now, yeah. You did chuckle in that breeze, and because you were being ironic, because you were actually on a course for, we people, for people who were suffering sight loss. Yeah. Well, Tom was on the course, <laughs> and I had done the course a little bit earlier and was in Dublin working, but I came down to um, visit the lady, the lady that looked after the hostel where we all stayed, and um, it was through visiting her I met Tom, who was on the course. So can I actually ask you, did, were you, were you, how much sight did you have at the time? I had pretty good sight. Um, I wouldn't have enough to read something in the newspaper, but I had a pretty good sight I could get around without any mobility aid at the time. So when, when you saw him, you knew what you were getting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom, how about yourself? I think for, for Rage and me, at the, as she said, we talked for hours, and I think we talked about, we were both going through stages of loss of vision. So I suppose we had a straight away topic easy conversation with each other and our kitchen table has been like that ever since very open very chatty even when our kids rearing them um, it our kitchen table just we chatted about everything and anything so I can't say love at first sight as the way Breach put it my own vision would have been I have an eye condition called retinitis pigmentosa genetic condition and my vision would have been going downhill from once I was about 16 I was hurt about 25 at that stage and it was going gone and it's now gone Wow. The, for, for people at home, the prospect of meeting as a couple and falling in love and rearing a family, knowing that you're not going to have sight at all, would be, would be terrifying to many people. But was it the fact that you could share it together that made it easier? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, were you scared, Breach? Um, Face, facing into a life knowing that you wouldn't be able to see? No, it, no, didn't, yeah. it didn't actually cross my mind. <clears throat> it was just the way life was? Yeah. Yeah. For me, what, anyway. For you, Owen, at yeah. what stage, we've got your beautiful dogs here, and we were chatting earlier on about your dogs. <laughs> at what stage did you need assistance from the dogs? Um, I got my first dog in 1990, and from then on, I've been having... Eunice is my third dog, and she's at the end of her working career now. Which I know you're very sad at the prospect oh, yeah. of her leaving you. Yeah, absolutely. And Tom, how about yourself? When did you first start? I touched first, I suppose, on Irish Guide Dogs for the Blind probably about 1977, 78 through a friend of mine who had a guide dog in Galway. And as my vision was going rapidly downhill, I would have applied about 1982 for my first dog because my mobility at that stage was very, very limited. We had two kids and we had a mortgage and basically I was the money earner, so I had to get from Balbriggan into Dublin. I wasn't great with a long cane. My first long cane lesson was a white cane sent in the post to me and work with the town, see what you can do. That was, that was as much help as you that got. Was it. Here's a cane, off you, off go. you go. So I ended up in Clifton Spinney because there was absolutely nothing in Ireland at the time in Long Cane. Then came home, then applied for my first guide dog in 82. Waited two and a half years because a match for me was not in there at the time. Got my first dog in 1985 and the absolute transition in my life from 19, 13th of April 1985, my life has been transformed because of the mobility 
the freedom I've got through all my dogs throughout those years. You were years. explaining to us before you started, both of you were saying that it, it isn't just a case of, oh, I'm, you know, I have problems with my eyesight or I'm blind or whatever, and they give me a guide dog. The dog has got to be matched to you. You've got a profile, and the dog's got to fit that profile, and it doesn't always necessarily work out. <coughs> Excuse me, and of course, it's also got to fit your family, doesn't it? Absolutely. We're, like, we're 34 years married, Regan, myself, this year. Um, we're matched. But I don't think, you know, a dog, you need the dog to do almost think for you at times. Um, you know, you're on the footpath, there's a wheelie bin on it, which is a natural thing, some day in the week. The dog has to have that initiative to get around that wheelie bin. It's, I often say it in talks where I do school talks and stuff like that, that I was on first name terms with every pole in Balbriggan <laughs> when I was using a white cane. Now, what I would mean by that would be that I missed the pole with the cane. Whereas the moment, again, that transition moment when I got my first guide dog, I didn't even know at times there was roadworks going on because the move. And it's the dog that matches. Breed's dog will not work for me. My dog will not work for Breed. They're extremely individual to us. And we were talking about this. This is your sixth dog now, the beautiful Gatsby that we can see down at your feet. And the bond between you and the dog. I mean, as you said, you were chatting to me, you said, they're responsible for your life. I mean, your, your life is in their hands on many an yeah. occasion. For certain, yeah. your safety is in the, your safety is in the hands of your dog to a very large degree. Of course you as the owner will make decisions. It's a joint decision when you go to cross Tara Street or wherever. I anticipate the crossing, the lights will go beep, 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 but cars do break lights and I've broken when I drive a car myself. So you'll always break. You have to be extra aware. And the dog has that initiative for his own safety as well. If you say forward to the dog, well the dog will go, but he's also trying to disobey you if that bicycle is slipping down quietly in front of you or something. So they're trained to actually go against you if keeping you safe yeah. is the priority. And themselves. And, and themselves. themselves. And, themselves. and we were discussing, and it costs a huge amount of money to train dogs, about 38,000 euro. But Tom, you broke it down for me because the lifespan of a dog is how many years? Well, the working lifespan for a guide dog is approximately eight years, eight towards nine years. So if I get my, when he's, my dog, say, 10 years lifespan, so he's born, puppy walked by a volunteer for Irish Guide Dogs for the Blind, then comes into the early training unit at Guide Dogs in Cork, then he goes on to the, the trainer themselves who trains him specifically for me as a guide dog or as an assistance dog. And then right through my working career with the dog, eight years, I have the support at the Guide Dog Centre all the way through that. And then when the dog comes to where Breed's dog is right now, nine and a half, the process begins again the puppy has been born, and break that 38,000 down into 3,800 per year. You know, you won't run the car for 3,800 euro a year, no, you won't run the house. Value. So if you put it, it's extremely good value, and extremely good safety. And to be honest, Bridge and I have never paid one single cent for our guide dogs. Volunteers come forward, offer their time to fundraisers. But Tom to and Bridge, fundraise. you have raised millions yourselves. Not directly ours. We have we've headed uh, up teams that have yes, we've had yes. we've headed up teams that have ra that have raised money for us. That's absolutely certain. Like Breed is from Longford originally. I'm from out in Mayo. My sister in Tune does quite a bit of fundraising. Breed's sister and family in Longford. Other friends. Up we were up in Cavan last week. We did a little fundraiser. And, uh, true friends. Yeah. You know that's the way it works, and it's all it's all the public. And it's all the people that are out there standing at the church gate every week and uh, shaking the box in the street and doing the badges on um, Shades Week. Shades. And they have a special puppy love campaign at the moment, which you must That's mention. Right. They're That's selling right. a possum range. Do you get it? They're selling a possum <laughs> range of gorgeous St. Valentine's Day cards for a very reasonable price of just €2, Euro, as well as lots of gifts for the loved one in your life, including puppy hampers. And people can buy them on www.guidedogs.ie. And we can see from just from you talking how important a guide dog is and how it can liberate you enormously. Guys, thank you so much for coming in and chatting to us this morning. And many more happy years together. And you, I'm thinking of you when you say goodbye to Eunice as well, Breach. Oh, yes. And you get a new dog. It'll be yeah. a tough day for you. Yeah, it will be a tough day, but it'll be a good day in the sense that I can continue to be mobile. And there is an, always a dog there for me and for everybody else that needs one. So... Thank you both. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you both. Yeah.